Hi and welcome to DCO. In these videos I share with you exercises and techniques that can help you understand parametric design better. In this particular video we'll be creating this I-beam from a base curve, moving points around and using sweep. The techniques that you learn here are going to be very useful for many other designs, not just this one. So I'm excited to share with you the process here. It's a straightforward concept, but like I mentioned, you can use this on other designs, not just an I-beam. So let's jump right in and let me show you the process. All right, so the first thing we'll do is create a line segment here. So what I'll do is type in units and I'll be creating this in model inches because that's typically the dimensions that I would use for creating, let's say, an I-beam. So now what we'll do is we'll create a base curve here inside of Rhino. So I'll go here to polyline, click to create a point, and then tap on F8 if you want to turn on ortho. So we'll keep it just a regular line segment here, and we'll be using this as our base geometry. Now we can obviously create this parametrically, and we'll probably do that towards the end, but we'll start with this curve. So we'll select this, go to a curve empty component, and we'll bring this into this component. So we'll right click as long as we have that selected, right click, set one curve. Now we can take this curve, control H to hide it, and now we can use this geometry that we drew inside of Rhino here inside of Grasshopper. And now we can start creating a script, which means that we'll be doing all of the steps here. So we can always replace this curve. So the first thing we'll do is take this curve and we're going to offset it to one side and then the other. This will give us the overall width of the I-beam. So we'll go to offset curve. We'll take this curve and offset it. Now I do want to plug in a plane, although we have this empty. I wanna create an X, Y plane, because if we ever do change this from being a planar line to something more curved, then this is going to be essential. So we'll plug that in. Then the distance, so we'll go to 1.500, and that will give us a slider from zero to 10 and put at 1.5, or you can create a custom slider by going to zero, dot dot 1.5 dot dot 2.00 this will give us the ability to change that slider and create a custom range starting at zero ending at two but this time we'll go here to five actually we'll go to 24 to show you here so we're offsetting to one side and then we're going to offset this also to the other side. So we'll copy this down, tap Alt. This is going to be the overall width. And then we'll do a negative. This way it offsets in the opposite direction for this component. So I'll plug this into the negative value, then the result into the distance. With this, what we've done is we've offset this to each side. What happens is, let's say this is 3.5. Well, if we offset 3.5 and then 3.5, that's going to be overall 7. So technically, this is not true because it's twice as much as this. So what we can do is here, when you have a slider that has two outputs, when you double click, it actually puts it into a relay, which is nothing more than just an extension of this but it allows you to have one output and then to a relay and the relay will have two separate outputs for two separate inputs. Now what we can do is take this and do a divide by two, which I think I've shown you guys before. When you divide by two, you see here it says division A over B, two is going to be B. So when you hover over B, it says two, four, go here to four, divided by two, then we get two, and then when we offset two to one side, two to the other side, it's overall four. So this is the way to maintain a correct overall width. Now we'll move on to creating the set of points. Now this is going to be the technique that I want to share the most on this one is taking points, moving, moving them up and down to create a line segment. And then we'll be using sweep to run that geometry through a curve. So first thing we do is we'll go to these two line segments and we'll get the endpoints. A 
I'll tap Alt to create a copy of this. Now we have the start and end point of each in one of those. We also want the middle one. Now what we can do is bring these two points down. So we'll take this one and this one, and we'll go to move. Now we do have the start or end and start or end, but we're going to just be using the start point. So we'll go to start. And if you want to keep it organized just to more visually do it this way, you can disable the preview on this. So it'll only show the start point. And then same thing here. You can tap Alt to create a copy. We'll bring the start point into this empty point component. And what happens is when I disable the preview on this, well, it will only show me the start point. So now with this, we can take these two points and we can move them down. We'll do the same thing with this. In the start point, disable the preview on this. Now we're going to start moving this down. So we'll go to this point, motion, negative, Z. So we're moving this down in the Z direction, down. And we'll go to point seven. Uh, we'll go 1.75. A little bit too much, so we'll bring this down a little bit. Now we'll do the same thing with this. We'll take this, move it up, tap Alt. This way we have all of this stuff there, and then we can move this down by the four point, the point four. Or using this slider. Okay. Now we want to take this point and bring it down also. So we'll take this, tap Alt, bring this down. The next thing is creating a line segment that's going to be the webbing. So what we'll do is we'll take this point and move it down again. But notice that if I'm going to bring something down, I already have this slider, I have unit Z, and I have negative, and I have three of these. So I can take this, slide it over, tap Alt. Then I'll be taking this top point as the input. Now we can use this slider as the overall length here. now we've created the center plan or the center webbing this is going to be the flange and so what we'll do is we'll have these two points and at this point this is where there are different methods of creating this right we can create a plane here and mirror all of those points or we could just move the points down or we could, yeah, so those would be the two options. We'll, we'll, we can take either one of those two. We'll take the approach of moving things up and down because we have, I don't really want to introduce like a different component here. We would be using mirror. We'll be taking all of these points and we have to move them down. But before that, we actually have to take this point and this point to move it right and left. So before we move this down, I'm saying that we need to move this to the right and to the left by a specific amount so we know where that webbing is here. It, and it has to have some thickness. So we'll take this and we will move them to the right and left. Now what happens is we don't necessarily, we have a vector, we could use Y, but if this ever changes direction, then when you use Y, it's going to move into the wrong place. So what we need to do is take this and create a vector that we're going to move towards. So I'll show you here. <clears throat> I'll create a line segment between this point and this point. And when you create a line segment, you technically have created a vector because it has some magnitude and a direction. And so what we'll do is use this line segment as our vector to move something. 
and for that I use amplitude so we'll use amplitude this line is going to be the vector what are we moving well we're moving this point so I'll go here to move even though we already have this here but that's going to be to move them down we'll be moving using this vector then we'll be moving this point Now we can use an amplitude number to change that size. So we'll go to 0 0.500. Zero zero. And so we can move it to one side by 0 0.5. Now what's going to happen is I'm moving it to the other side by 0 0.5 or whatever slider this is. So once again, we have to divide by two. So we'll do this, then now that we have moved it to this side, I'll tap Alt, create a copy of this, and actually move it the opposite way. So once again, we'll be introducing the negative to go in the opposite direction. So we have this, this, and we no longer need the center one or this line segment to create a vector. So now with this, like I mentioned, we're going to each side, so this is divided by two. And then this gets overrides the amplitude. So now this is 0.25 to one side, 0.25 to the other side, making this 0.5. Let's go ahead and actually move some of these things around. So distance. How much it drops. Now we can take these two points and move them down to create the length of the web. So we'll go here to move, which we already created down here, and we're going to move those down by themselves. We'll have two of these and move this one down and move this one down. Okay. Now what we need to do is take these corner points and move them down to that same elevation. So what we'll do is we'll take this, tap Alt, now let's go to, we're going to have to go to this point, this point, this point, and this point, and move them down the same amount. What's going to happen is the depth of the flange is going to matter here. Let me show you why. We'll take this one, this one. Those have been moved down. Then these two, we'll copy this twice. Why? We need to move four points down. So one, two, three, and four. Let's do that. We'll start with this point. And here's the thing. This part gets a little bit confusing, right? The reason why it gets confusing is because you have to keep track of everything, but you can always select to see what it is that you need to plug in and you can just add hold down shift to add more input so we'll plug this one in we won't need to hold shift this one because we want to override that one so i'll plug that in that's the first one then this one which is this one we want to plug that into the other move and override the other one now it's been moved down then we want to do that again with this so let's bring this one, override that one, and then this point will override the last one. Okay. What happens, like I mentioned, is since we move this down and then we move this down the same amount, this needs to be moved down by the same depth of the flange. So what we'll do is here we have negative, by this amount, now we need to add, right? We have three points, so let's go, let's go here to four, let's make it a specific number, four. Four plus 0.5 equals 4.5. And now we need to bring that down. So we'll go to Z. And then negative. 
So we have recreated this vector not to move it down just by this amount, by 4, but 4 plus the amount of the flange. And now we can use this number and override all of those that came from this one. Let's override those. And so now we have all of our points ready to connect. I'm disabling the preview on the things that I don't necessarily need, so I'm not getting confused. So this is first point, second point. Let me show you. Let's see if this lets me right here. Right, okay. This point, this point, then down like this, we'll be using a polyline to connect it. So let's go to polyline. Scoot all of this down because we have to be careful with this one. Now with this one, we will hold down shift to add more inputs. So we'll start here. First one, second one, then well, we want this one, then this one. So we can't go down to this one. We have to go down to this one. Hold down shift to add it. Then we're moving back down to this one. And you'll see me moving the component around to accommodate that. Now we're going down to this one. Hold down shift and we're adding this one. We're going to the next one. This one. So hold down shift, add the next one. And this one. Let's see if nothing new. What it is is this is actually taking care of the offset. So this is how wide the flange is, and that's what I tied it to, and that's the incorrect one. Let's see if this is the one that I should have tied it to. So I messed up in terms of let's see here. This when I did the addition. I thought it was this one. That actually takes care of the width of the webbing, not this one, which is the depth of it. So notice that I made a mistake, big mistake. Now we can fix that by plugging B into the correct one. Okay, next. This one, hold down shift, we'll add this one in. Now we gotta go back to some of the first ones, right? Because these are some of the first ones. Now let's go back and see this one that was moved down and this one moved down. We got this one. Hold down shift. I'll add this one. Then one. Hold down shift. And lastly, we can plug in the last one, but <clears throat> at this point, what we can do is go to close set boolean to true. And so it will close that down. So with that, let's go back and adjust some of these things. We'll go to 8 inches and then depth of 0.5. Then we'll go 0.5. And then we'll go to the depth of 12 inches here. Now, there are other things that can be done, like taking these points and moving them down. I-beams have different ways of in configurations. So I would suggest taking a look at how I-beams come together because some there's a this is technically rounded off and there are things that are more particular to I-beams. This is more of an overall design that you would want to create. And the reason for this is 
once we create this line segment and we have the original line segment so let's go here to preview now we can take this and sweep it and that's going to be the other technique when you use sweep you can create a cool shape just from a base curve and a rail so the section is going to be this one and the rail is going to be our original curve so there's a lot of outputs coming out of this i'll double click to create a relay and have that come out of the relay so i can replace this curve component and it will take care of all of that so we'll go to relay bring that all the way back to our rail and now it will sweep through that the cool thing like i've shown you in other videos is i'll type in show and then i'll take this and move it over and this can be expanded on right we can also change the direction and this is the reason why we offset it and move the points up and down otherwise if i would have let's say said move these points in just the y direction this would not work correctly now let's go to another curve so we'll go here to a control point curve or a interpolate curve let's create Something like this. Okay. Now we'll take this, set one curve, and it will work. Now notice that this is an open solid, or not a solid, an open surface, and it's not a solid yet. So what we need to do is take this B rep, type in cap, cap holes, and it will place a start and an end to it. So now I can take all of this, disable preview, and all I need to look at is the end result. And this can be an I-beam that can be changed to whatever size. So like if you want the depth to be crazy, you can make it that way. Or if you want this to be a little bit larger or smaller, these are things that we can adjust. And lastly, I guess, let me show you one last technique. Now, I don't necessarily like this one because... This is going to round everything off at once, but if you wanted to, you can create this segment using the lines and round off just the inside portion and then have the rest not be rounded off. That's going to be a little bit of a longer tutorial, like if I if you ever want me to do that, but I can definitely show you those things. Let's see. Lastly, I'm I am gonna show you one more thing. Let me show you this. So let's say you want to do this but to more than one of these. So I'll create here a line segment, hold down Alt, use the gumball here to create a few other curves. Now I'll take these curves and plug them here into the curve. Now notice what happens here. Set multiple, multiple curves and it doesn't work. Here at the end, we have something that's not working. Well, what's happening is the information is coming in all at once so what we need to do is either right click here and go to graft or sometimes i like to do it visually with a component this way you can kind of see it here when you graft it now you're able to do that to multiple curves and they don't necessarily have to be the same direction they can change depending on whatever design you have now there are limitations to this of course like if i took this line segment and I go to set one curve. Then I take this segment and then move this up. Well, it'll work, but just know that there's going to be a point in which it may not work. And when you start getting super inclined, the section that we created is then angled up, therefore not necessarily true to the dimension that we create here. Although, it does create some cool things here. So just understand that there are some limitations. So I'll create a line segment. This arc is not going to work. So for this specific script, it has to be a plain curve. If you want me to show you, I can definitely show you another tutorial where it, if it's not planar to get it to work, there are different steps for that. But with this one, we'll create a line segment. And we'll go start. 
xy plane, direction, x, and length, 50. The reason I do this is so when, when I have the script available for you, you can actually take this and you can have it already working with a parametric um, line, right? Then you can come in here and then unplug this, set whatever other curves, and get it working. So I have it here mostly, mostly to sh uh, have it available and have it working right away for you guys. I'll take this, delete it, and that will conclude the tutorial. The techniques that we learned today were to first use a base curve, then extract points and move them up and down to create a polyline. Once we create that polyline, this polyline can then be swept through this component. So the two techniques, like I mentioned, are going to be moving points up and down and then using sweep one. What I'll be doing here at the end is just cleaning it up and putting labels on the script here. So I'll probably do a time lapse. Let's do it.